Thanks, Leslie, and thanks for, uh, for all of you for joining us uh, here today. So today we're releasing a platform for the moderate party in New York. We created the moderate party so that voters would know who I am and what I stand for, but it's become much more than that. It's become a home for a large number of voters across party lines who right now are experiencing a sense of political homelessness. Washington is broken and our country is on the wrong track. For too long, the most extreme voices on the left and the right have dominated politics. The far left and the far right seek to turn America into something it's not. Whether it's Bernie Sanders and the squad or Elise Stefanik and Ultra Maga, they are two sides of the same extreme coin that don't reflect the views of the majority of Americans, our shared values, and the desire to work together to solve common challenges. And blind loyalty to party and political figures instead of loyalty to the American people they were elected to represent continues to give oxygen to the extremes. And it's the leaders of the Democratic and Republican parties in Washington who are guilty of being so focused on winning elections and advancing political careers that they have allowed themselves to be dominated by the far left and the far right. The moderate party is reclaiming a powerful voice for the great middle majority. It is time that the rest of us made our voices heard because there are far more of us in the great middle than there are of those on the extremes. We realize it's not a false choice between all government or no government. It's about better government, more effective government, one that solves problems, not creates them. It's about restoring trust by returning government to what it's good at, security, roads and bridges, strengthening our communities, and to stay out of our personal lives. In New York 21, we don't like being told what to do or who to follow. We think for ourselves and come together in our communities across party lines to solve problems. It's time our representative in Washington was part of that proud tradition. The extremes on the right and the left have plenty of loud voices. I will be a fighter for everyone else. The moderate party platform has three pillars, safety and security, a strong economy that works for everyone, and American freedom and individual liberties. Safety and security. The most important role of government is to provide for the safety and security of its citizens. We are going to fund, fully fund our police. Those advocating to defund the police are advocating for a policy and messaging that is absurd and dangerous. Blue lives matter. State and local cops, corrections officers, border patrol, federal law enforcement like the FBI, they all protect our country, our communities, our families. Those on the far left and now the far right, like Elise Stefanik, who call for defunding the police and put targets on the backs of law enforcement have jeopardized all of our safety and security. We should be ensuring that our law enforcement have the resources and trust to keep our community safe and keep our capital safe from violent insurrection. And although not a federal issue, New York state bail reform has been a disaster and it's left our criminal justice system hamstrung and confused. Governor Hochul and state legislators need to step up to provide our law enforcement, district attorneys, and judges with the power, trust, and autonomy to keep our communities safe from criminals. The moderate party will increase funding for law enforcement and give them the resources and trust they need to keep our families and communities safe. We are going to secure the damn border once and for all. Border security is national security. And we cannot be a sovereign nation without defined borders that we can protect and defend. For decades, both parties in Washington are to blame for the failure to secure the border. They have used border security and immigration reform as political weapons to get elected, not problems to be solved. I don't trust Republicans or Democrats in Washington to do what's necessary to secure the border, so long as each of them believe it's politically beneficial for them to do nothing. We need to secure the damn border first and then we can take on immigration reform. Border security is a necessary prerequisite to creating the clearly defined, secure, and humane process for immigration. And many conservatives agree, we need immigration reform to address workforce shortages and drive economic growth in the United States. On national security, we are going to establish a strong national defense against all threats, including China and Russia, and provide our military and their families with the resources and respect they need to complete the mission. Congress must 
reassert its role over the executive on military and foreign affairs to prevent the kind of wars of choice and military adventurism that neoconservatives have promoted and prevent the kind of isolationism that the America alone foreign policy advocates like Elise Stefanik have promoted. Both of those have left us less safe as a nation. And it's time for a smart foreign policy and national security that recognizes that America is and must remain the strongest nation in the world. And we are even stronger when we work with our partners and allies. Our safety and security also depends on how well we protect our environment. We must protect our communities from the dangerous effects of pollution and the disastrous impact of extreme weather. The health and well being of our communities and our local economy depends on how well we protect them from environmental change and disaster. It is absurd and dangerous that the far right has chosen to oppose clean air, clean water, protecting our farmlands and energy diversification. Our security is not just about public safety and national security. It's also about the security that comes from knowing you and your family can protect your health and well-being. We're gonna improve access and affordability of healthcare, mental health and elder care, especially for our veterans and our seniors, and especially in our rural communities. We need to ensure that we can get the care we need when we need it, and we won't go bankrupt when we do. The second pillar is a strong economy that works for everyone. Federal deficits and debt matter. They have direct implications for inflation. Our debt is reaching unprecedented levels, and we believe fiscal responsibility must be restored. Both parties are to blame in recent decades for their fiscal irresponsibility, and I will call out those Democrats and Republicans who advocate for writing big government checks for programs we simply cannot afford. We need to rein in government spending and take steps to balance the budget and reduce the national debt. We must eliminate inefficiency, fraud, and waste in government programs. That requires members of Congress to actually show up for their oversight responsibilities. If the government is going to spend our hard-earned resources, then that spending must keep us safe, grow the economy, or protect and strengthen vital programs like Medicare and Social Security. We are pro-worker. The strength of our economy depends on the strength of the American worker. We are going to protect the rights of all workers to unionize and advocate for better working conditions and pay. This will lift up all workers and their families. We are also pro-business. We're gonna advance policies and investments that grow businesses and keep those job creators in our communities. We're gonna crack down on China to protect American workers and American businesses. We are pro-farmer. Farms are essential to our local economy, culture, and food security. We need policies that make it easier, not harder, for farmers, particularly small and family-owned farms, to continue to farm, like cutting down red tape, government interference in farm operations. Where the government is involved in things like pricing, the price must be above the cost of production. On taxes, we support fair taxes. For too long, the average American working families and seniors have had too much of the tax burden, while both parties in Washington have catered to their corporate donors to prioritize tax breaks for the ultra wealthy and corporations. We will make sure that the ultra wealthy and big corporations pay their fair share and cut taxes for the middle class. Any business owner will tell you that you can't grow a business without making investments. That same holds true for our economy. That's why we're focused on pro-growth investments. We need government investments to focus on areas that can help grow our economy by getting it back to the things it does well. Repair roads and bridges, bring broadband and cell service to our district, provide vital services such as childcare in our community so that they can thrive and fully fund our public schools, skills training and apprenticeship programs. These kinds of investments will ensure we have the infrastructure and talent pipeline necessary to help grow our economy. Reducing costs. You know, everywhere I go, I hear about the struggles that working families are having with the cost of daily life. Many of those things were challenges long before the pandemic, but have only been exacerbated by both the pandemic and rising inflation. We're gonna focus on bringing down the costs of daily life for working families and retirees with common sense solutions on childcare, housing, and prescription drugs. The third pillar is American freedom and individual liberties. All Americans, no matter our background, value freedom. It is what makes us American. 
Protecting our freedoms is greater than politics or party. It's essential to who we are. But many politicians are choosing their own party and personal gain over our hard-fought freedoms. We are going to protect and defend the Second Amendment. As a gun owner and someone who swore an oath to protect and defend the Constitution, I understand the importance of our Second Amendment freedoms and will always protect them. We do recognize that rising gun violence is a problem and represents the number one cause of deaths of our children, and that requires urgent action. We support common sense measures like universal background checks to keep our cops, our kids, and our communities safe from gun violence while protecting the rights of law-abiding gun owners. We do not support an ill-defined assault weapons ban that fails to address keeping our cops, our kids, and communities safe. We are going to protect personal rights and individual liberty. The far right is waging a war against women. The health and freedom of millions of American women across the country are currently under assault. There is no place for government to interfere with a woman's control over her own body and her healthcare decisions. With policies like no exceptions for the health of the mother and bans on birth control, these are dangerous policies that target women. We will fight against a national abortion ban and fight to immediately pass federal legislation to codify the protections recently stripped from Roe versus Wade. And we must stop government overreach into our personal lives, as we've seen from the far right across the country. We will protect the rights of people to love who they love and be who they are. Our democracy itself is also under threat and must be protected. We will protect the foundation of our democracy, the right to vote. We will do so by strengthening the integrity of our elections, by ensuring that only verifiable registered voters participate, while at the same time making it easier for eligible voters to vote by enhancing voter access to the polls with automatic enrollment, absentee ballot access, and making General Election Day a federal holiday. Finally, it is critical that we must restore the power of our government back to the people. Restoring a government of, by, and for the people requires us to restore trust that our elected officials are working for the people, not for their self-interest. We don't need politicians in Washington. We need public servants. We must enact term limits for Congress. And until we do, I will impose a term limit of four terms upon myself. We must take the corporate and dark money out of our elections by restoring comprehensive campaign finance reform. We must also prohibit members of Congress and their families from holding and trading stocks while serving in office. No one should be using their office to get rich from stock, and I consider this a top priority to restore trust with the American people. Now listen, I'm a moderate. I always have been. Some of you know that I come from a bipartisan family. Dad is the Democrat, mom is the Republican. His was the party of giving working people a break. Hers was the party of personal responsibility and strong national security. And perhaps then it's no surprise that for the majority of my voting life, I was registered as an independent. I have long believed that no one party has a monopoly on good ideas. I have voted for Republicans like John McCain and Democrats like Barack Obama. People are exhausted by the extremes. They are tired of the division, tired of the chaos, and it's time to restore a voice for the great middle majority to actually make progress on the issues that matter most, to make our government work again. We are on the wrong track, and a big part of the problem is the old guard in Washington. Chuck Grassley and Dianne Feinstein cannot possibly be the best America currently has to offer. We need new leadership in Washington that is focused on serving the people, not their self-interest. And we especially need new leadership in New York 21. Elise Stefanik has sold out our district to advance her career and support her corporate donors. She has consistently put her own interests ahead of the needs of what's best for our district. Donald Trump had a word for politicians like Elise Stefanik, sellouts and spineless politicians who put their career advancement and reelection ahead of the needs of the people. He called them the swamp. Trump was right. Elise Stefanik is the very definition of the swamp. And this moderate party is the home where we can all come together to defeat her in November. Thank you.